you probably don't remember this happening, but uh, I remember it quite clear. I, I seem to remember we were in the car. I think we might have been going to my grandmother's at the time. And we heard on this thing called a radio. It's this thing. It's, in, it's still in a lot of cars. You, you turn this dob, knob and, and sound comes across the, the air. Sometimes they play music. Sometimes they complain about liberals. Um, but um, this was back in, in 1970 where, where it was unheard of. A 50-yard field goal would have been pretty amazing at that time. 50-yard field goals now are pretty good. But this was a 63-yard field goal. This was much further than anybody had ever kicked before. And he kicked it outside in, in New, um, not in New Orleans, but at the Tulane Stadium. Well, it might be in New Orleans. I think Tulane is in New Orleans, which is very humid air, very thick air. And, um, but the thing is, and some of the controversy around this was Tom Dempsey was born with a club foot. And so he had a special shoe. And, and basically the shoe didn't have like a toe on it. It was, it was like cut off, like right – if you take – if you look at your foot and cut off like midfoot, that's the type of shoe that he had. And, and so it was flattened out. And so some people argued that, that he had an advantage on, on doing this. Um, but, uh, you know, kind of like um, – what's his face? Mark McGuire still has a single – or Barry Bond still has a single – season home run record with an advantage. Um, they, uh, they, they didn't, they didn't disc discount this record for anything else. And it took like 30 years before anybody tied it. And no one's beaten it, but somebody else had tied it, kicked a 63-yard field goal. Um, he, he made a 63-yard field goal. It cleared the uprights. And so the, the question kind of is, um, how much did it clear the upright by? Now, I was I took a few liberties with the distance and all, or not with the distance because the distance is true, but with the velocities and the angle. But if you figure an upright looks something like this, at least now it does, and if he kicked it at an angle of 50 degrees above the horizon at a velocity of 25 meters per second, the ball would have gone. Something like da 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 boink. I don't know if it actually it didn't go boink because it didn't hit anything. We know the height of the upright is three meters. So it's three meters from at that point. We know from the upright to where he kicked it in terms of meters is fifty six or fifty seven point six meters. And the basic question is, how much did he clear the upright by, or at this point, what is the displacement in the y? That's the basic question. And so we understand the problem. That's the first step, right? Second step is what? Break it into x and y. So here's a displacement in the x. We're looking for the displacement in the y. The 3 meters is a, is a value that's in the y, but in reality, we don't use it until the very end. Some of you all used it as part of the calculation, which isn't quite right. Um, and, and we can talk about that a little bit more later on. The other thing to do is to break up the initial velocity into the x and y, which works out to be 25 cosine 50 is the x. 16.1 meters per second, and then the initial velocity in the y is 25 times the sine of 50, which is 19.2 meters per second. The question is displacement in the y. So let's use the displacement in the y equation. The first one that we see looks Something like displacement in the y is initial velocity in the y times time plus one half a t squared. We know the initial velocity in the y. 
We know acceleration. It's g, negative 9.8. We don't know time. We don't know how long it takes for the ball to leave his foot to get right there. Some people tried to use the equation final velocity in the y is the initial velocity squared plus 2ad. Problem is, we don't know the displacement in the y. Some people plugged in 3. And you're basically finding the final velocity in the y direction at a height of 3 meters, which is close, but not quite right. Some people plugged in the 57.6, which is in the x direction, which is really wrong. But we can't use we can't use this particular equation because we don't know the displacement. But what we do know is if we're kicking it there and we want to know the point in time here, time is independent of x and y. It takes the same amount of time to get to that dotted red line. And so this distance, this distance, we know it's 57.6 meters. And so we can say that the displacement in the x direction is just the initial velocity in the x times time. No acceleration. So the second part, 1 half at squared, doesn't count. Acceleration is 0. That goes away. We have 57.6 is equal to 16.1 times time. Time is 3.6 seconds. We now plug it into there. There. We plug in 19.2 into the initial velocity and negative 9.8 in for our acceleration. And you can calculate the displacement in the y. And that works out to be 5.62 meters. This was the main thing I was looking for. The question says how high above the goalpost, which then you subtract 3 and it's 2.6. But the main thing I'm interested in that you can calculate that displacement in the y direction.